Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and Season 3 for Halo Infinite's multiplayer has dropped. And with it we have two brand new armour cores to dive into and find a little bit more information out about. Today we'll be looking at the Mirage 2C, basically Halo Infinite's semi-powered infiltration armour. And down the line, when more of the armours are available, we'll look at the Chimera armour core. To brush up on the known lore surrounding semi-powered infiltration armour, I'd strongly recommend you look at my most detailed breakdown on the semi-powered infiltration armour, which is linked in the card above and in the description down below. But if you want to watch this video all the way through first, it will also be in the cards at the very end of the video. I've reviewed all of these new armour permutations and components for the Mirage, and I've come to the conclusion that aside from some peripheral lore associated with what the UNSC has been doing since the end of the Human Covenant War, and particularly during this war with the created, there's been very little new lore that's been released in regards to the way in which semi-powered infiltration armour actually works. So at this time there's no real need to revisit that most detailed breakdown to add any new lore, as currently I feel like this video will be more than sufficient to cover the new components, give you an idea of what's in Season 3, as well as extrapolate a little bit on the lore surrounding some of these components. So with that all said and done, please join me as we look at the Mirage 2C armour core. The Mirage 2C armour built by the Materials Group builds on the foundation of the Gen 1 Mirage and Semi-Powered Infiltration or SPI otherwise known as SPY armour program to create low cost multi-role powered assault armour that meets baseline Gen 3 Mjolnir standards. The Mirage helmet manufactured by the Materials Group. Mirage 2C helmets comprise the full range of Gen 3 capabilities to significantly reduce cost, complexity and operator augmentation requirements compared to the Mark 7 baseline. The helmet is also compatible with the HUL Hardened Uplink 21 Corda is a cost reduced battlenet node optimised for fast uplink and minimal onboard cache. The TAC RS Moonglow is an Optronics package to augment the rather meagre capabilities of standard SPI sensor suites. Emerson was asked to minimise costs for the mass produced remote sensor modules known as TAC RS TAC Cam, so they repackaged a popular action recorder in an armoured housing. The Mirage 2 helmet doesn't strike me as an exact copy or even a kind of reinvention of the original SPI armour helmet as seen on the cover of the Ghosts of Onyx. Nevertheless it does still have that very iconic SPI style and is a great starting helmet. The Velez helmet developed by Emerson Tactical Systems. Initially a testbed for experimental ECCM systems Newly manufactured Velez helmets have found a strong niche with tactical signals intelligence collection teams. The helmet shape, visor and all round aesthetic of the Velez helmet much closer matches the original SPI armour helmet as seen on the front cover of the Ghosts of Onyx, specifically worn by Kurt051. So if you're going for a lore accurate Kurt recreation I'd strongly recommend this helmet alongside the Recruit Olive Coating and either the Noble Visor or the Heroic Intervention Visor. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Extender Helmet manufactured by Avez. Extender helmets can be used by unaugmented pilots and space crew, but only Spartans of one type or another can make safe use of its high bandwidth machine interlink mode. The extender helmet can also be up armoured with the extender Griffos, an up armoured faceplate and redundant systems for extended operations in void environments. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Neath helmet manufactured by Calibs Defence Solutions. Neath helmets feature an updated version of the Gen 2 Tracer Sensor Suite and little else. 
life support and general purpose computational capability were all sacrificed to manage cost. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Tyro Helmet, manufactured by Hannibal Weapon Systems. Tyro helmets possess minimal onboard sensor systems, but have multiple ultra wideband interface channels for coordinating distributed deep reconnaissance network arrays. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Erinyes helmet, manufactured by Watershed Division. Erinyes helmets and associated sub-processor modules are built around its first-generation deep synchronization interface core, a crude emulation of reflection mirror neural feedback systems recovered from Forerunner War Sphinx wreckage. The helmet is also compatible with the Erinyes HIM, willpower and skill filtered through Forerunner predictive algorithms to drive machines well beyond their safe limits. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The law surrounding the Erinyes helmet suggests that the Office of Naval Intelligence have found a Forerunner War Sphinx, or at least the wreckage of one. War Sphinxes were what the Forerunners called mid-sized fighting suits. In reality, they were very large and immensely powerful machines of war, and were capable of reconfiguring themselves at the will of the operator to allow the individual to operate the suit in space, in the air, or on a planet's surface. These huge machines were actually 10 meters high and 20 meters long, and since they were warrior servant in origin, the likelihood is they had systems built into them to allow them to control other foreigner machines nearby, including Onyx Sentinels, which just so happened to be a warrior servant sentinel design. Seemingly, this technology has now been reverse engineered by the Office of Naval Intelligence, and the Erin Yez helmet and its associated components are seemingly capable of both detecting, communicating, and in perhaps some cases, controlling Forna Sentinels. The Nexus helmet manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems. Emerson has extended the Mirage production template to test several promising non-Mjolnir developments. Nexus is the prototype variant featuring an autonomous net war rig and swarm drone controller. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Athlon helmet, manufactured by Misrea Armory. Streamlined, efficient, adaptable, all features that make the re-engineered Athlon a front-runner for mass production in this new age of strife. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Athlon helmet originally made its debut in Halo 5 Guardians as something approximating a training armor for Spartan 4 personnel. It's really good to see this particular armor permutation make a return on a platform as iconic as SPI armor. The Bellus helmet, manufactured by Naftali Contractor Corporation. Bellus helmets are all-purpose combat helmets being evaluated for use by unaugmented army personnel. Naftali is more than willing to take advantage of Spartan combat testing during the current crisis while it evaluates future marketing plans. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. The Balor Helmet, manufactured by Korolev Heavy Industries. Field tests of the Balor will prove out the utility of the MSN-04 Active Sensor Cluster and a streamlined ground-up rewrite of the Mjolnir Observation and Emission Control Protocols. The Balor also has the option of being up-armoured with the Balor Guard Plate. Korolev is uncompromising in maximising protection per credit spent. The helmet is also compatible with the Hull Hardened Uplink 21 Corda, the TAC RS Moonglow, and the TAC RS TAC Cam. Balor, as I'm sure you'll agree, very closely mirrors the aesthetic look of the Scout helmet for the Gen 2 platform, which I do believe will be enough to make this a particular fan favourite, 
and when up armoured with its facial guard plate, it's a very imposing helmet. The Street Viper, manufactured by Watershed Division. The created were methodical in tracking down all known examples of Street Viper on Earth, eliminating each prototype and their Beta 5 testers, then wiping all records of its existence. The remaining helmets are now under close re-evaluation. The helmet also has the additional attachment of the Viper Shroud, a multi-target acquisition and queuing system with locked functionality that mimics capabilities of the Z5080 SRSA stroke V module. There's evidently some lore behind the scenes going on with the Street Viper in that the created actually hunted down these helmets and their associated components and destroyed the prototypes as well as killing the Beta 5 testers. This suggests that this helmet in some way was perhaps a palpable threat to the created, although I'm not exactly clear on why or how that would be the case. But given the narrative that is at least suggested of being pushed during the Season 3 cutscenes, the Office of Naval Intelligence is evidently up to something in regards to the created, and the fact that we're seeing a return of the infection game type for multiplayer, where effectively an AI can take over Spartan armor, this suggests perhaps that this particular helmet variant was incapable of being taken over by the created, or had some sort of system built into it to counter a created AI control override. Also, while on the subject, I did actually make a lore and theory video a while ago suggesting the idea that created AI may be able to take over Spartan suits. I'm glad to see that this has actually come to fruition. <laughs> if I can find the video, I'll link it in the description. The TAC Multimax, manufactured by the UNSC. A Venezian design adapted from stolen Mjolnir prototype plans that was itself acquired by Oni industrial espionage teams and put in production at various UNSC mini factories. The TAC Optican FMK 60 I, manufactured by Optican. Field medical kit with next generation regenerative gel treatment canister. The AAPK Rock Ordnance Pack, manufactured by the Materials Group. Up armored vest and gear rig developed specifically to be cheap, easily sourced, and comfortable to use with Mirage 1 and Mirage 2 SPI suits. The TAC Laceweb TRM Core, manufactured by the Watershed Division. Laceweb is a self-contained fauna node emulator used to extend the capabilities of the Erinyes reflection mirror. It also provides standalone passive warning of nearby sentinel signals which correspond to tactical defense modalities. The AAP Granite, manufactured by Korolev Heavy Industries, rated highly among veterans. The TAC Infinity Rig, manufactured by the UNSC, Desperation is the cousin of invention. The Util Project RA ZPEC, manufactured by the Watershed Division. No studies have been done regarding extended exposure to Fauna Zero Point Energy cells, but only is reasonably confident that any permanent damage is worth the tactical gains. The Util Superhub Custom, manufactured by the Materials Group, built from Acquired Oni firmware fused to cutting edge consumer smart comps held together by hopes and dreams. The TAC Aegis Puck, manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems, an auxiliary shield generator module for special occasions. The TAC Aegis Puck is a shield generator for SPI armor. Now, again, we're talking this is multiplayer, and in multiplayer, all Spartans have shields because it needs to be somewhat of a even playing field, so to speak. Although I would, again, argue that it didn't necessarily have to be. You know, you could have had systems where perhaps you didn't have shields, but you had additional up armoring to make you tougher. You could have heavier armor, but it would make you slower. Or you could opt for speed and have either very light or almost negligible armor, but you'd also be proportionally very unprotected. 
but nevertheless that's by the by. However, in the lore, most semi-powered infiltration armors never had any energy shields. So the implementation of a armor attachment that actually has an auxiliary shield generator module within it is actually really cool to see. And the way in which this particular shield generator seems to be designed suggests that it would only really give a single surface front facing energy barrier. I would imagine something akin to perhaps a bubble shield but just forward facing leaving the Spartans back uncovered. Which I have to admit is pretty freaking cool. The Util I Spy 2 manufactured by Ohana. Military adaptation of popular sensor cluster used by CAA first in exploration teams. The UA C2 SIAP manufactured by the materials group. All round protection at a reasonable price. The SAP Guard Pro Max manufactured by Hannibal Weapon Systems. High mobility, moderate levels of protection, low cost. The UA CDS Spy Rev 6 manufactured by Calibs Defense Solutions. Calibs has little interest in the Spy Mirage project, but they won't turn down a potentially profitable contract for components. The SAP LWAS Rev 3 manufactured by the Materials Group. Comfort and articulation at the expense of protection. The SAP Ursa Pad manufactured by Korolev Heavy Industries. Built tough with integral drag rings when the body fails. The TAC Laceweb SCM P manufactured by the Watershed Division is the first field of all prototypes of programmable effector arrays for the Erin Yez control module. The UA Guard Pro Max, manufactured by the Materials Group. Variant armor pattern used by trainees at Chiron. The UA TACUP A22, manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems. A capable armor module, but considered overkill for the Mirage 2 system under most circumstances. The Util Pro Tech Comnet 2020, manufactured by Naftali Contractor Corporation. Protected antenna arrays compatible with any communication system built to accommodate Mjolnir power and interface systems. The Util Superpower Outback, manufactured by Ohana. Ruggedized battery pack system which can be made Mjolnir compatible with a little elbow grease and disregard for manufacturer warranties. The Rift Alpha manufactured by Materials Group provides a tunable level of force amplification. The Rift Kappa manufactured by the UNSC. Found in the same cache as the M-Type A up armor plates. No obvious manufacturer and with a serial ID not found in current UNSC logistic systems. Rift Epsilon manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems. Manufactured from Materials Group templates, but with small touches added by Emerson Combat Testers. Project Deity Walk, manufactured by the Wardshed Division. Spartans briefed on the program are told it is a shield harmonic analyzer. No further information was provided. Attack SCM-P, manufactured by the Wardshed Division. Erin Yez is built around a new definition of cause and effect. The M90B PDM manufactured by Mezrea Armory. The M90B pursuit deterrent munition in a convenient wrist holder. The R107 Scanman manufactured by Ohana, a tactical computer coprocessor module. The shock brace manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems emits a painful neurological shock on contact, deterring unarmored targets from grappling. The Angus Box, manufactured by the UNSC. The integrated computer of Mirage Armor is serviceable, but operatives that need extra processor crunch can take advantage of jerry-rigged coprocessors made from salvaged hardware. The UA Front Plate, manufactured by Mizraya Armory. It's not fancy, but it works. The Maca Macro Binox, manufactured by Ohana. Technically an off-the-shelf civilian design sold to Frontier Explorers and CMA Marshals, but built to far exceed UNSC mil spec. The Tac Belt manufactured by the UNSC. 
high quality off the shelf tactical belt with some smart tailoring to sit comfortably on the waist of a power armoured warrior. The UA Type SFX manufactured by the Materials Group don't mess with success particularly when your freedom and life is on the line. The UA Type SST manufactured by Mizraya Armoury built to the edge of the minimal design specs to shave every credit from the final cost. The TAC SCM-P manufactured by the Watershed Division, supplemental antenna modules. The UA Type SLO manufactured by the Materials Group, not the best, not the worst. The UA Type SYI manufactured by Emerson Tactical Systems, built to keep Spartans moving. And there we have it, all of the currently available armour components for the new Mirage Armour Core for Halo Infinite Season 3. And while we're on the subject, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about Season 3 so far. I'm personally really enjoying the new game variants that have become available, and the new maps that are available are really cool. And I'm looking forward to the Fratches event that surrounds the Chimera Armour Core, which I will of course cover in its own Armour Core video, as well as the Fratches event lore itself. I also have some theories on exactly why Oni are suddenly emerging from some of the multiplayer maps and why it seems to be almost a point of focus at the moment in Season 3. If you'd like to hear about that, let me know in the comments down below. And until then... Thanks for watching. If you're new here and liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button while you're at it so you don't miss my future uploads. Links are in the description to get connected and jump into the Discord community with me, and if you really love the content I'm making, consider supporting the channel over on Patreon for tons of awesome perks. Pop your comments down below if you have an idea of what I should cover next, and hang around for the end of the video for other suggested videos you might be interested in. Huge shouts to my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet, Phantom, Thomas, Mikhail and Irrefutable Justice, my monitors, Andrew, Cameron, Darian, Flaming Halo, Madness, Masked Owl, Michael, Spartan 0137, The Cave Potato, Uwu Master, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub monitors, my growing fleet of Strato Sentinels, my ever vigilant enforcers, and all the other awesome patrons that are helping to support the channel in a big, big way. Huge shout out to Todd Morrison for keeping the installation powered with that glorious vacuum energy. Much love to you all. Take it easy, everyone and find peace in the domain.